I realized my dream of going up into space aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. Agosto 28, a septiembre 11 del año pasado, estuve a bordo del transbordador Discovery en la misión STS-128. Entonces nosotros nos lanzamos agosto 28, en ocho minutos y medio es lo que dura uno para llegar al espacio. O sea, te vas de estar estacionario a ir yendo 28 mil kilómetros por hora en ocho minutos y medio. Entonces ya le estás dando vuelta al mundo en cero gravedad. Le das vuelta al mundo cada 90 minutos. So it takes eight and a half minutes to go up into space. As I-18 for a 14-day mission. You go, you go from being stationary to being in orbit in eight and a half minutes, traveling 17,500 miles an hour. Jeez. And you're going around the Earth every 90 minutes, once every 90 minutes. And we, we latched on, we rendezvoused with the International Space Station, and we went and stayed up there 14 days. That translates to 217 times around the Earth. Le dimos vuelta 217 veces al mundo en esos 14 días. Uh, we traveled more than 5.7 million miles. O viajamos más de 9.4 millones de kilómetros. Así que le digo yo a mi esposa que tengo mucho kilometraje, pero, pero gracias a Dios me sigue queriendo. Y luego nos quedamos allí, nos juntamos con la tripulación de la Estación Internacional y e hicimos nuestras tareas, conducimos nuestras tareas y regresamos septiembre 11 aquí cerca de su casa en Edwards Air Force Base fue donde, fue donde aterrizamos nosotros. Mucha gente me dice, a lot of people ask me, did space change your view of how you see the world or your experiences? Te cambió el espacio. Y yo siempre les he dicho que sí me cambió el espacio bastante. La primera, la primera experiencia que yo tuve, real, realización más bien, first realization that I had was how fragile our environment really is. Como les dije, les damos vuelta al mundo cada 90 minutos. So that means 45 minutes you're in daylight, 45 minutes you're in nighttime. So as you, as you, make, that, as you make that transition from night to day, el sol, el sol va naciendo del otro lado del mundo y tú vienes por el otro lado. And you just see the sunlight hit the atmosphere just right where you can see the thickness of the atmosphere. And let me tell you, it looks pretty darn thin. It looks very fragile. So I became a big believer of taking care of our environment because I can see anything we do here on Earth to upset the delicate balance. Our kids are not going to be able to enjoy the same quality of life that we know or we enjoy today. So I think we ought to be, able, we ought to be doing more to be able to take care of our environment. La segunda, la segunda cosa, the second take home I had was when I first unstrapped myself and floated in space. I, I took the, my seatbelt off, and the first thing I wanted to do, it was about an hour and a half after we had blasted off, I, I went for the window so I could see outside and I could see our planet. And what I saw, it, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it was one of those aha moments that you had, is it, I looked out there, and we just happened to be over North America, and I looked down, and, you know, in, in the third, fourth grade, when you study geography, you see the globe, right, in this classroom. There's different colors of, of the countries and that delineate, you know, the different countries. Spain, France, Germany, and all that. Uh, obviously, when I looked out the window, I didn't expect to see the world in different colors. <laughs> but what I did expect to see was be able to distinguish different areas, different countries. Y lo más bello, the prettiest thing that I saw was, when I was over North America, I could not tell where Canada ended and the U.S. began. Where the United States ended and Mexico began, and so on and so forth. It, it took me to going out of space to realize, looking down, we are just one. Yeah. And, 
And borders, borders are human-made, are human-made divisions. I wish, having that aha moment, I, you know, I told myself, I wish we can take all the politicians up there. I, I, I know a lot of people are laughing and saying, and you know, it should there. be one-way tickets, right? But uh, assuming, assuming it's a round-trip ticket, we, we take up the politicians up there and, and, and have them experience that aha moment. I'll guarantee you, once we come back down here, that we would have a lot less conflict, a lot less wars uh, in, in, in this world of ours. And so those are the two take home things that I had uh, when, I, when I went up into space. Y mucha gente dice que he ido lejos, pero yo realmente yo creo que no he ido lejos, porque sé que puedo hacer más. I know I can do more. I have more dreams and expect to reach them as well, as I'm hoping everybody else out here in the audience, especially our kids, have dreams. And I hope they expect to uh, reach them as well. But if you've been listening to my story, you'll see that the key to success is not only the individual, pero son los padres que dan la oportunidad para que los hijos tengan un buen estudio. Son los maestros that go out of their way to create opportunities for the kids. Son los hermanos mayores que guían a los, a los eh, hermanos menores. Es la esposa, el esposo, los hijos, y con todo respeto a Father Charles, la fe. You see, the whole lesson here is, if you take anything out of everything I've said today, is that we should not be afraid to dream. But we should be able to turn those dreams to tangible goals. And we should go off on setting those goals. And you should remember the story, the 12 years, the perseverance. You should remember the anecdotes of what my teacher did, what the, my parents did. And you should be able to tell yourself, si este vato pudo, por qué yo no? That's what I'm saying. If we begin to dream, we can certainly turn them into reality. Let's just take some of Cesar Chavez's heroes, for example. A peasant from Morelos, Mexico, led his country to freedom. Two humble leaders from India left their country a better place. A minister from Atlanta, Georgia, helped free his people in the United States. I'm talking about Emiliano Zapata, Gandhi, Nero, and Martin Luther King. Señores y señoras, jóvenes, todos, I'm here to remind you that the people I just mentioned had dreams for a better future and they gradually made it a reality. You can have dreams too, and you too can make them come true. And every time you pass by this beautiful monument, remember the strong and relentless efforts of nuestra gente. At a time when Latinos are being profiled, we must not give up. We should continue to raise our head up high y seguir luchando por una vida mejor. Arizona and many other states around the country want or have adopted measures that make Latinos feel not welcome. They believe that by adopting legislation to make it hard for us to earn an honest living, that we will leave. Pero somos muchos, and we are far too down the road of seeking a better opportunity to turn back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tenemos mucho trabajo por delante. Todos podemos poner nuestro granito de arena para cambiar 
UDETER leyes que perjudican a nuestra comunidad latina. I leave you with some very wise words from my own hero. That some of our struggles and reasons to continue fighting for justice, dignity, and respect. Don Cesar Chavez and Paz Descansa said, the fight is never about grapes or lettuce. It's always about people. Los dejo con palabras sabias de mi héroe que nos enseñó a luchar por la justicia, por nuestra dignidad y por el respeto. Don César Chávez en paz descanse dijo, la batalla nunca se trata de uvas o lechuga, siempre se tratará de la gente. Thank you everyone for having me here. Que Dios los bendiga. Muchísimas gracias.